Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Uh, so, first of all, like a huge congratulations on conducting this tournament, especially because like this is so much more significant considering how in 2021 we couldn't have that, and it's one of the biggest tournaments in India that we look forward to. So, like uh, congratulations on um, like this is an achievement, and I, I believe as an Indian and as a tennis Indian fan, it's a very proud. Thing to have been hold to you know be seeing the ATP 250 event uh, just happening here. Uh, although so there's this sort of bio bubble that you form, and uh, I was wondering if you could just begin by uh, sort of uh, describing everything that you put in place in the whole situation. Yeah, first first of all, thank you, and I reciprocate your feeling because as an Indian, it's actually a very proud moment for us. Uh, maybe people uh, will not realize. That you know, India had a very very uh, bad uh, kind of a uh, image of handling COVID in the last wave, and since then, a lot of negative things have been written about India. Negative things have been written about how we went ahead and uh, did it, uh, how India could not handle its uh, you know uh, patients, uh, and uh, we have to change this image some way. And I think this is a small contribution on our part to ensure that this tournament took place. It took place incident-free. It took place with all the care and uh, all the rules and following the rules and regulations. And I think uh, uh, me and my colleague Prashant, uh, the tournament director, uh, we have gone out of the way to ensure that you know there is no incident. We have uh, you know placed everything uh, under a lot of care. Uh, the players, uh, the ball boys, the linesmen, uh, everybody is in a bubble. Though we had to spend more money. For all this, but it uh, it really uh, the money is not the issue now because it's such a big tournament. Uh, you know, if you would have had cases on the very first day of the tournament, if you would have like ten players testing positive, this tournament would have not even started. But now I think we are in the uh, on the day three, day four, uh, where most of the players have gone back. Most of the players have gone back happy. So I think uh, this is the first step of the success. Uh, probably. On Sunday, I will again so just say hi to you and then we can celebrate. So, uh, absolutely, sir. Let's hope. Uh, and of course, things look on the right track. So, it certainly looks like we would be celebrating come Sunday. Uh, meanwhile, so is there a certain set number to the tournament staff or the media staff that you guys have put uh, that you have imposed in this bubble of yours? Yeah, so when we got the permission to do this event, uh, we were told that, you know, we need to work with uh, less than about 100 people uh, in this stadium. And the 100 would include uh, everybody, you know, right, from the volunteers to security to mm. media. And uh, we got the permission specifically to do the tournament without any crowds, uh, because uh, there are two major events happening in Maharashtra right now. Uh, one was the AFC Women's Cup and second was the 10th Tata Open Maharashtra. So the government gave us a blanket uh, permission to do both the events as these were already planned events. Uh, all the other events in Maharashtra at this moment have stopped. There are no competitions, not even at the local level. Uh, many of the clubs are closed, were closed, but they all opened up yesterday. So there were very, very strict guidelines when this tournament, uh, when we decided to do this tournament. At that moment in Mumbai, there were about 17,000 cases every day. In Pune, we had 5,000 cases every day. So we were at the peak of the Omicron and uh, then we were really worried of how to do it. So uh, under the guidance of uh, you know the director of sports here, Mr. Om Prakash Bakoria, Mr. Asim Gupta, who is the head of uh, you know disaster management, who gives this permission. So you know they were all also worried. But somehow we convinced them that this is the plan, this is what we are going to do, uh, this is how it will be. And, you know, now it is very difficult to cancel, cancel an international event. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think, uh, so they gave us that, you know, it is your responsibility to ensure that uh, this tournament goes without incident. So that is why we have to be very, very careful. But then ATP had certain regulations. They wanted a TICO. A TICO is like a tournament infection control officer to be appointed. So now the TICO had to be a person with a great experience. So we hire, uh, we then, you know, got in touch with uh, our friend Sahil, who runs a lab in Pune, uh, a lab, uh, medical lab. And he's a, his daughter used to play tennis. So we said that, you know, we'll appoint you as a TICO because you know much about testing, you know much about uh, all these kind of uh, 
you know the regulations rules and everything so we would like it to be there so once we appointed sahil then you know the atp has been in touch with sahil uh, then we appointed a specialist uh, ent surgeon because he did the once you are really serious uh, your case goes to an ent in the cases of covid because the whole infection is in your ear nose and throat area so we have a tennis player so we got him on board and he's been here since the first four days before the tournament and then you know we have my labs uh, which is a company pune based startup which i think received if you search for it uh, it is also been funded by other pune wala uh, the serum institute so there are big it's a big startup and they're doing a fantastic job in testing so my labs are partner here and they came on board another friend close friend sujit jain his company and uh, they have been here so now we have two vehicles here one at the hotel one in the venue and uh, uh, so just today i was just writing this mail uh, to atp because they said what happened about the testing but fortunately the local authorities have said that you know uh, you guys are doing a good job so uh, keep going don't do tests right now but if we can do tests when well, the players are going back ho oh. so we already done their rt pcr when they entered the hotel so they are all covid free so those right. still we had a few cases but it was from rt not from the anybody from the player side so there was one player who was found but he was a qualifier right. so but anyway he is out now he is he's tested negative and he is gone back going back home he is going to play bangalore now the bangalore challenger right so, the bangalore challenger so the point is that uh, we have really really taken good care of the systems we have you know avoided people coming into unnecessarily into the players lounge it has been very tight we just have given accreditation to players and the coaches so even i i cannot i am trying not to go in so in the players area we only have three volunteers right not more we needed seven but we are only working with three so we have a we have a, a stringer in the area so the stringer is being tested every day he is not even going home he is staying there but he is not going home so he is being tested uh, the the people who are you know in the housekeeping come there in the morning the, those who are working there are also tested so the people who are in contact with the players we are trying to see that you know they are tested more yeah, yeah. and rest don't go near them so uh, but all of uh, like now we are opening it up now there is a food area the garden area where still there is a lot of uh specification the players are sitting separately we are sitting separately but we are also staying in a bubble we are staying in the hotel so whoever is working in the tournament with close proximity to the players are working are staying in the bubble so the our team is also staying there the ball boys are staying in another hotel so they they are brought here dropped back eat there the ball boys whom we have now uh, put here you know these are all coaches we have a very fantastic uh, Uh, we have started a scheme called the tribal program, where you know we train the tribal children, youth, uh, who have passed the 12th standard graduates to become tennis coaches. It is a wonderful scheme that we have started about 2014 or 15, and we have 80 of these coaches working in India currently. So we call them, uh, we call 20 of them to Pune to be a part of this because we wanted them to celebrate. this event we wanted to see how big it is we wanted them to understand these guys are not ball boys essentially they are you know coaches who are coaching they are assistant coaches who are working with kids but you know to have this experience to watch players from playing close so we thought that you know we should get them because if i have local boys they'll go home if i have kids they are not allowed because they are not doubly vaccinated so so many things anybody who is working in our tournament has to be doubly vaccinated right otherwise you cannot even get an accredit so there are you know a uh, lot of protocols we followed now i forgot i forgot everything because uh, but when we started you know everything was in place but it's good uh, now and these kids are here so they are also staying in the hotel in a bubble so they go in the morning together come back together in a in a bus eat there so they are not contaminated but still you know one or two people have cold so we have asked them not to come so the point is that you know Uh, it has been really, really tight in the beginning. Now we are in Wednesday, so I'm a little bit more relaxed, and you know. And now the, our gov- government has given permission to open up, even people coming to watch. So we might have about thirteen hundred to fifteen hundred people on the last day coming to watch. So Friday, Saturday, Sunday, we plan to open this up up for oh. the for the public. 
So I mean, so a bit. I mean, it's mighty impressive just how uh, stringent you know uh, you guys have been in ensuring that absolutely everything is accounted for, everybody is accounted for, and the people who are in constant touch with the players they're tested every day. And of course, but you know, one one wonders uh, what would happen. Like, what would be the laws uh, if somebody were to break the bubble? Because everybody, time mean, we've seen this in history, we've seen this in the past few years in a lot of different sports as well. Uh, in, say the NBA, for example, where they did make a bubble for all the players and the staff in Orlando. But every time they, you know, some players or some members of staff, they did end up eventually, inevitably breaking the laws of the bubble and stepping out. And if, if has that happened here? And if it has, yeah, because you know, uh, here the players want to play. It's the first few tournaments of the year, and uh, they understand the importance of being together in a bubble to follow what whatever is told them, told to them, because they understand that you know if they get sick, they are in a, some other country, and you know it's very difficult for them, and they will have to isolate themselves for the next 10 to 12 days, yeah. and uh, they cannot play the next tournament. So everybody wants to be on their job, do it, and get back home and get out of the country as fast as possible. So there has been no no player who has gone outside the hotel except to come to the venue. Right. So in our own cars. So we're very happy about it. So there is there was there were a few players, but we have taken an attacking that uh, who, know, who wanted to go and buy some shoes or for them because they didn't have some equipment. We said we'll get it, but you know, this is, anyway. So we took special permission. We got a special car, made him wear mask, made him made him wear, wear the you know. So he was like mm-hmm. covered. And, yeah. so, but now these are things uh, which 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 is not under our control. What can I do? If somebody falls ill, it is not in my. We have taken care. Mm-hmm. So my job, my part of the job is done. If they fall sick, if they don't adhere to rules, then it is their problem. So then they have to stay for seven days in the hotel. We have made arrangements for that also. So now, uh, like I told you, there was a player from the qualifying who is already in the hotel seven days. There are two or three people who are in the tournament from ATP. Two of them have one from Fox 10, which is our, you know, the line line call. So one of them has been positive. So, you know, we are still taking good care of them. There are daily visits by the doctors. They go and check them. They do their pulse reading. Uh, they are, you know, they the food goes to their rooms. So we have taken our part of it. But now, uh, if anything happens to any player, they cannot come into the venue for sure until they are negative. So they are all in the hotel until they will come negative. So these are some rules that we can make. So you know there is a contact tracing now because we immediately when the player was caught uh, that he had COVID because he felt sick. So we first did his own test and then it came positive. Then we did it through the lab. Then we did an RT PCR. Every day we have been doing an RT PCR because sometimes the RT PCR also can be uh, false reports. So we are ensuring. So once we ensure that it is positive, then the protocol starts. Then we found out whom we played with, whom we practiced with. Then we do the test of those players. So there is contact tracing, back back contract tracing also. So see, football or a team game is different. But tennis is like more individual. They are like to themselves. Everybody has a room to themselves. Nobody is staying with each other. The only time they meet is on the courts or either at dinner or lunch. But there also we have tried to segregate, give them more, much more space. So, by God's grace, and I'm still praying that, you know, we have done our bit. So, now we cannot do more, more than this. So, so, of course, so we saw how the 2021 event had to be cancelled. And uh, uh, so, that sort of gave us, uh, that sort of gave you guys uh, a year to maybe, you know, form a template looking at other tournaments overseas. Right. So since this is a tournament that's been held in India after the while, so what are some pointers that you took away from other overseas tournaments between that time? See, if you look at the history from 2021, so many events have been cancelled. Every tournament you try to do has been cancelled. See, we did ITF events in India. We fought with ITF on record. We had arguments with them to ensure that the tournaments were held in India. Because there were no tournaments in India for any players. Our Indians could not travel abroad. None of the Indian players could go abroad to play because they, they did not get visas. There were stringent rules. There were uh, quarantines. There were you know no exemptions. But when it came to India, 
they wanted to cancel the tournament because we did the same. So we had massive arguments, and Mr. Anil Dubey, who was secretary, joined, and you know, we convinced ITF that we will do this event, and we even told ITF that you know, <laughs> if any of these events get cancelled, we'll pay for the tickets of all the players. So there was a big risk. So if the tournament would have got cancelled, we would have to play, pay for every tournament for at least forty to fifty lakhs tickets. But we took that chance. We said, let's make a success out of it. So the two women's tournament, we had three three back-to-back -back tournaments in Maharashtra: one fifteen thousand dollars, one twenty-five, two twenty-five, and every tournament went out incident-free. So we had the experience of doing those tournaments. We ensured that you know players got to play. Indian players got to play. The Asian players got to play, and uh, so you know these are some things uh, we need to look strongly. It's not about uh, cancelling the tournament. So even when this tournament was uh, being uh, discussed by ATP, whether to do it or not do it, this is the, I'm talking about before Australian Open. So this tournament was planned 24 days ahead, not one year ahead. Mm. So we even we didn't know whether this tournament would happen this year. Okay. And with the rising cases, like I told you earlier, mm. there were chances that it, this tournament, the government would cancel everything because of the rising cases. Mm. But fortunately, you know, the government of Maharashtra has been a solid support, and they have done, uh, gone out of the way to do things. You know, our deputy chief ministers from Pune, Mr. Ajit Pawar, uh, all the government officials, our you know, organizing secretary, uh, Mr. Pravin Darade, our treasurer, you know, Sanjay Kandarja, all IS officers. So. Uh, you know the big every every moment uh, in the last few year, I would like to you know really appreciate uh, the government of India. I mean the AITA. See everybody curses AITA. What are you doing? What do they do? But it's not true. The amount of hard work we put to see it's not easy to do a tournament. I have told this earlier. You need six different government permissions to get a to get this tournament as an official tournament. This has to come from the sports ministry, from the home ministry, from the finance ministry, from the Ministry of External Affairs. So till you get a visa, there are six permissions required. So we have everybody, even in this COVID situation, our team, you know, the AITA, uh, Mr. Vivek Sharma, who is our director, administration, who is after this, he was in the office every day from morning to evening. See, we had Mr. Prabhat Kumar, who is now the, you know, with the MEA. Uh, he's a he's a uh, he was ambassador earlier in Kazakhstan, so he's a he likes tennis. So through him, you know, it has been day and night of work in the last 24 hours in the 24 days to ensure that everybody got a visa, because again people have to get a visa, people have to get the letters of letters of permission. So so I think uh, the whole uh, universe connived. Together to ensure that this tournament, uh, you know, happens. Yes, sir. So, uh, so another thing about this tournament. So you mentioned a while ago that uh, events like uh, the Montpellier Open, which is happening right now, uh, it's in France, right? So you mentioned how such bigger uh, name events they tend to take away a lot of big name players uh, to that particular region, uh, uh, you know, away from India. So uh, even right now, say uh, looking at the men's draw for the uh, for our event here, uh, we've only got one top fifty player in Aslan Karatse. So like, is that something you wish to see change? And uh, like, how do you see uh, a more big name players coming to India over the next few years? See, earlier when we took this tournament, when we got this tournament from Chennai, it was placed before the Austin Open. So it was a right warm up. So even the first two years of the tournament were before Australian Open. Yeah. So we had a good crowd because people would come from here and go to Australia. But all of a sudden, the last two or three years, Australia itself has tried, because of their issues and problems, they tried to <coughs> do the ATP Cup, they tried to do the uh, so many tournaments and everything shifted. So the choice for us is whether we do it now or whether we do it in September. September, no, because it's a rainy season in, in, in India, monsoons, and uh, we will not be able to do tournament. So the only option we now have is doing this tournament this week, which we still feel is a better bet because people coming from Australia, losing in the first week of Australia, can come to India and play. So unfortunately, you know, we, uh, you, you must have read Dan Evans wanted to come. So Dan Evans is top 20. So we did everything, but unfortunately, he could not come. 
because his uh, uh, physio turned positive. So because being a close contact, he did not want to take a chance, so he did not come. Otherwise, he would have been another top twenty. So we are waiting to get. See, but ultimately, we have to realize so many of players who have played here are today top ten, top fifty. So we are creating champions. Even today, if you see Aslam Karatsa played the qualifying last year. Did you think he was top fifteen? He was a qualifier. Nobody even knew him. And today is a top six. We have Yamar, you know, who is doing very well. You know, we have Radu Elbor. Last year we had James Duckworth, who was zero. He was hundred. Today he is forty in the world. So you know, our people, our crowd, our Indians are getting to see probably the next gen stars. You know, we have Musetti. Maybe Musetti is forty, but next year if Musetti is in ten, he will not come back again to Pune. Though he has won the tournament. But Musetti will be top ten in the world. Today people are ready, are getting to see Musetti. See, more importantly, it's about Indian players providing that opportunity to Indian players. Even how should we care who wants to come? It is their perspective, their choice. But still, we feel that we have a very good field, and uh, this is one of the best fields of 250. See, there are some tournaments which have been historically having good people because France itself has. Out of the top 140 players, 30 players were in top 100. Spain has 20 players in top 100. So everybody plays that tournament, it gets strong. So, but if you look at the comparatively the other tournaments across the globe, which are 250, you will still find that you know there are many tournaments which do not have a strong field even as us. You know, in some tournament there is a uh, in qualifying a player who is 600 players. Our cutoff for the qualifying this year was 170. Yeah. So we have to evaluate like that. So those who are those who are into tennis will understand. Those who do not understand tennis or just followers of tennis or just uh, armchair critics will not understand the importance of uh, this kind of a uh, list. But those who are into tennis, the players, the ATP, understand how important. <clears throat> you know, we know what it is. The players know what it is, and uh, it is fortunate or unfortunate. You know, what can you do? So, like you know, all of a sudden, Montpellier decided that only players who receive booster shots would get to play. So they changed the rule. Everybody wanted to come here, but it was too late to come here. So now things will evolve, things will change. People know that this is a good tournament. People are being taken care of. People know the hospitality. So automatically, this tournament will gain. See, but most importantly for me, it is for the Indians. It is for the Indian players. It's for the Indian officials because. You know they have something to go back home and say, okay, we have a tournament in India. How many countries have a tournament in in their country? Sure, very true. Rohan Bopanna will be happy and proud to say that you know there is a tournament at home. Yeah. But would somebody in uh, Moldova be able to say that? Would somebody in Uzbekistan would be able to say that? Some, would somebody in uh, you know Gabon? Yeah. Limited tournaments, 52 weeks or 100 tournaments is a big thing. so you know we have to look from that perspective my officials are going abroad but when now this tournament and all the officials come here they have the chance to be together they are happy to host them you know we have a exchange program for officials this year we do not have but normally we have two officials coming from some other country and our officials going there so this gives an opportunity for doing all these things we can exchange wild card but our own players we do not want to sacrifice to to do these deals so but sir i mean you mentioned how you know it's a great thing for indian players and indian staff but it's even bigger for uh, so uh, right now it looks like it's uh, it's going to be amazing for indian tennis fans as well with uh, how you i mean i personally am quite excited about uh, the notion of maybe allowing uh, viewership in the final few days as you mentioned and I, it's also one of the questions that i actually wanted to ask so like if you guys would have done something sort of like the australian open did 50% at their end but if, like is is that really in the works is that close to fruition uh, by the end of the week see now yesterday the new regulations have come out just yesterday which says that they will allow you know one third of the capacity of the stadium So our stadium is about 4,200 to 4,500 is the seating capacity. So even if we say one third, it becomes 1,500 people. So 1,500 people will be allowed to enter the stadium. So we are planning uh, with with that in mind. 
because it is a government permission right otherwise to take to take an extra permission you know it becomes very difficult for the government because if they give it to us then they'll have to give it to some other sport and such hmm. that and we do not want to be a part of a precedent setting whatever rule is rule we will follow but because they have gone out of the way to ensure that this is happening we are more than happy so we didn't want to you know write another letter to them asking for a special waiver or exemption because even the times are not right i don't know who's coming into the stadium i don't know how many people are positive i don't know mm. how many people have you know are still uh, coughing mm. so why do we take a chance and uh, then you know not have a final all right better to wait uh, and go according to the guidelines mm. so uh, like uh, i generally generally hope that you know we catch up again on sunday and uh it's all good uh, we all the celebrations are done and maybe just maybe you know we had you towards the end and uh, just uh thank you so much for such uh, so much insight that you've given into this one big tournament that all indian tennis fans this look forward like, to uh, it's like leander's uh, one last roar so you want <laughs> it should be one last roar from all of us certainly sir uh, I mean thank you. uh thank you. thank you so much thank you Samarvir yeah. and uh, we will uh, meet sometime uh, in person and I, I would be happy that you know you were here uh, uh, and watch but uh, you can watch on tv and i think uh, it really looks nice i mean Absolutely. it's not just patting my back but uh, when i saw it yesterday i was i was myself it looking nice because you know from here it is different from tv perspective different Absolutely. but whatever we uh you know thought of me and prashant i think it's uh, it's uh, it's come out well so thank you it's very a, much thank that's you that's an understatement thank you it's a remarkable thank you, thank you so much thank you so much again yeah. bye absolutely bye.